Okay, we got the, the rotor head on, we measured our angles, they are good, so now we can start completing the, the rotor head. Uh, there is two bearings in here for the Bendix shaft. Bendix shaft sits in here like this, holding the, bear, the, the Bendix on a bearing, top and bottom. So we have to... Usually it takes a little bit of, of grinding, sit down a little bit tight. All this is laser cut. Yeah? And wherever the laser starts and it ends, there's a little... A little in German we call it a nipfel. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yeah, so this has to be filed out. And then maybe with a file run around to get the bearing in flush. It gets a cap. Whatever I did with it, I brought one, here it is. A ring that goes over and this snap ring, it holds the bearing in position, cannot come out. It's riveted in, so the rivets can be drilled out fairly easy, just in case something has to be replaced. But in any case, for this, the, the rotor, of course, would have to come off the airplane. So we got the top bearing, we got the bottom bearing, that goes in position just the same way. We get them ready, then we take the the Bendix shaft, it slides in here. That's my baby, I designed it, so I'm pretty proud of it. You have this hole going all the way through there. The Bendix gets attached with a roll pin, so we, we drive a roll pin in here, making sure that when we are done, this part rotates freely, does not bind up on the roll pin. And this assembly, once it's together, goes in here, feeds in, we put it in, then we put the bearings on top, rivet the bearings in, and this fits in, sits in, solid. If we like we brought this rotor head over here. You, you might be able to see the top cap riveted in. Same thing, the bottom cap riveted in. The Bendix working free. Next thing we can do, this is the rotor brake. Yeah? It goes with a cable. The, 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 the outer cable housing attaches here. The inner cable attaches here, and as you squeeze on the, on the handle, it pushes this one down. When we build them up, there's no play in there. In order to... to the, we have to, to, to grind the, the brake pad in shape. So right now, it just touches. As the brake pad wears in, there will be a little bit more play. If the play is getting too much, there's an adjustment here. It, it gets adjusted. Uh, the, this thing, the brake usually with, with no, with no, uh, with a little bit more play, it, it would move up and down like this. Now we don't have a, a brake pad handy, it would sit here. So this goes on first. I have my own notes here. When I build one, so I don't forget anything, it would be, it would kind of suck if I have the rotor on and then I realize, oh damn, I forgot the rotor brake and it happens. So this is where I, I go through this thing point by point to make sure I don't forget anything. Once this is, this is on and in position, I can start uh, building up the teeter tower. We have this is the room for the bearings. Uh, in comparison with other with other gyros, we use two two big bearings to kind of increase the lifetime of the of the bearings. Uh, with two bearings, it's it's half a load. Where well, this one fits, sometimes they they fit pretty tight. We had this before. Okay, the. The two bearings, in order not to bind up, we get their space. 
outer rings. This one connects the two inner rings and now the inner ring and the outer ring can spin freely. I had an argument with our management in there. They designed one washer in one piece. It didn't work. And I told them, no, it has to be two independent spaces. Then it works. And it works. So we put two washers, uh, two bags in here with the spacer. Here comes the, the blade stop. It not only stops the blades from, from tilting too far, it also holds the bearings in. So this is what squishes the bearings in, holds them in tightly. On the, on the bottom end of the teeter tower, we install the, the ring gear. Six bolts, also Loctite it in. It's kind of important on a chariot to put Loctite on on every bolt or nut or whatever that's that's not that's not a lock has not a locking device by itself like a, uh, a nylon lock you don't need lock tight but running running a bolt into aluminum or so it very important to put the lock tight on then bolts have a tendency to back out from the vibration there's vibration everywhere on a helicopter for instance no bolt without any safety devices, whether it's safety wire, uh, a quarter pin or whatever. You cannot have a boat without, without safety. Uh, okay, so let's say we have the, the rotor head assembled. Looks like this. The bearing is in. Uh, the ring gear is on. There's a, a spacer in here, spacing off the, the rotor head. At the, the teeter tower from the this sits inside the, the bearing gives me the the spacing here this all would be inside here of course this means we could yes with the with the rotor brake in position we can install the rotor head yeah with this thing on the pin, oh, I didn't get the bolt. Yeah, it's just like water inch bolt. Do I have one here? I do. I do have one here. This bolt is where your life hangs on. <laughs> so, and this thread, so it's, it's long enough thread that's solid enough. That works. Uh, this bolt goes in here, it's, it's kind of funny, just by, oh, this thing has to go on with it off, or else you wouldn't get the bolt in, it's funny, just explaining it goes so quick, when I build one, it pretty much takes me the better part of a day to, to get everything, see again, this is, this is laser cut, so the whole all the holes are slightly smaller. Yeah? This means this hole has to be reamed out, three quarter inch. A three quarter inch reamer is quite a bear. You have to hold on tight or you walk around the workpiece yourself instead of the, the tool turning. So this gets reamed out. Then we, with this thing set on here, we can put the bolt in, set the the teeter tower on and run the nut on. The nut gets a, a quarter pin. <sighs> yes, you have to get the, the nut tight enough and still have to be in a groove to get the quarter pin through. Sometimes sometimes the torque is pretty good. It takes two or three people to, to pull on the nut. A nut like this can handle more torque than one one person alone can pull. We have a long, uh, a long bar to, to to move it. Almost impossible to get too much torque on, but definitely have to have enough. So, okay. Now I'm running out of. What else do we have? Yeah. Okay. Once we get this, this unit the same bot the the rotor head and the teeter tower on 
then we can start putting the whole thing on here no first this was only temporary in between the the roll and pitch block and the stainless which is aluminum uh, these brackets here are stainless we do not want the the aluminum to rub against the stainless so we have our our spacers here which are like tailoring washers the thicker ones if the spacing is much thinner ones and this is if there's hardly any this is uh mylar does not does not wear very easy so depending on whatever it takes we put them spaces in here now just by eyeballing i would see yeah it only takes one black one so i would use a, a white one on either side to to keep a spacing in there it also catches the the grease when you lubricate it down the run and then we can we can start putting this bolt on first uh, in this case I would say it's just for chicks and giggles it's the wrong way around we would like to have the nut back here so in the end it's accessible when you, when you have to work on the on the road ahead and you you plan on taking this bolt out and take the rest off then you can you can access to the nut get access to the nut if it was in here it would be a little bit tough so we put it here uh, the next one is is this bolt which gets the same spaces in here a little bit more tricky because by now this unit is fairly heavy it's nice to have a second pair of hands to 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 fit the 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 spacers in uh, if somebody asks me about the, the torque on these bolts you cannot torque them too much yeah or else this whole thing gets stuck your your rotor head would not move but yes you do want the slight friction it takes vibrations out it catches vibrations on the on the rotor head and doesn't feed them forward to your stick so what i do I tighten this nut, do I have a nut here? Anyway, I tighten this nut, finger tight, and then I go one more groove that just tightens it up so it moves, but it's not too, not too stiff on the stick. Yes. Uh, it's possibly, yeah, once, once everything gets lubricated and, and loosens up a little bit more, it's possible to to, to add another uh, another flat on the on the nut. I'm sorry, I don't have one here. My eyes. It's, it's just a castle nut like this, running the quarter pin in here, or moving it one one slot. This is what I usually do. Yeah, finger tight, and then I give it one more notch. This just tightens it enough to 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 tempt the the vibration of the rotor head. But most of them, yeah, after after a few hours, they usually reset the nut one one flat more. Uh, okay, we got this one in. We put this one in. What did I do with my other bolt? I'm getting old. Yeah, it's we usually put it in from come on baby from this side because here this is the atta attachment for the for the cable connector where the cable bundle comes up that holds the the rotor head temperature sensor that goes in here and here would be the, the rotor RPM sensor. Uh, it bolts in here. Uh, we usually set it about an eighth of an inch below the, below the ring gear. And it senses metal or no metal. Metal 
Well, no metal. You know, this is 10 holes. And so whatever pulses it gets divided by 10 is your rotor RPM in the instrument. This is how this thing works. Also by sometimes if it if it doesn't sense it, yeah, by adjusting the, the space in between, you can make it work. The, yeah, it's, it's up there. The rotor head sensor has a little LED built in. When it senses metal, it lights up. So this is once you install it and, and, and check if your spacing is good enough, when you see the light, as you turn the master switch on, you know it senses it works. Uh, our castle nuts, yes, this is, see, there's a little, a little friction. This is what, what is desired. Uh, another check could be, like, by the time you have it tight and you lift the rotor head, it, it stays there. It, it does not fall down. Yeah, this, this would be another by some uh, setting for the torque. Anything else I forgot? Yes. There's two. Right now we are using we are using brass bushings. Go in here where the the hub bolt goes in. Uh, we are using brass bushings that we that we buy but we have to drill them out because the the hub bolt is 12 millimeter. That's one metric fragment that we have on the on the airplanes. So we have to drill it out to 12 millimeter, and they they also get pressed in. We don't want the pushing to move in the aluminum. The bolt, the bolt in here does not have to move. The uh, the bolt is resting on two bearings in the in the teeter block yeah and the bearings allow the movement the bolt is stationary so are this pushing so they could they could be out of oh here we we see a, a brass one obviously not drilled yet so it has to come out go in the lathe and gets drilled out uh, did i miss out on anything I think. Yep. Well, I th thank you very much. Really appreciate your knowledge and your time this afternoon. Yeah, no problem. No problem.